Hey guys, welcome back to the 401 Week. Today we're going to talk all about external hard drives and flash drives. Alright, so if you notice I have a bunch of different external hard drives and flash drives here then we're going to talk about how they work and what to expect whenever you're messing with one and need to back up data or move files from one computer to another. Now the most common way of moving data or doing something like that is through a basic flash drive. These use a USB port on our computers and generally every computer has USB ports and most flash drives are USB style. It's a very common port, keyboards use them, mice use them, printers use them, anything that you connect to your computer probably uses some sort of USB connection. Now flash drives are very good but they also have their downsides. They're very expensive for how much space you get. So for instance, this is an eight gigabyte flash drive. This was probably 10 or 15 bucks. But if we wanted something larger than an eight gigabyte, maybe more like a 512 gigabytes or something, that would probably be upwards of $100 just for that size because of what it's trying to do and what form factor it's trying to put it in. The next step up from a flash drive would be an external hard drive. And I have two right here I'm going to share, but these are different than the two we talked about before. And if you notice, I have two styles that are exactly the same. Now there's two differences between these, but these two are, are also different than these two. So the two main types of external hard drives are either going to be USB powered or externally powered. So what I mean by that is I'm going to start off with this hard drive right here. This is a very basic hard drive. It's a few years old, but it still works. It uses a USB cable to plug into the computer. So there's only one connection on this drive right here. And when I plug this in, this end of the cable would plug into my computer. So there's only one cable for the power and for the data. So the downside to this is we're using the power from our computer. So that's going to put a lot of wear and tear on this because it's putting all the power and data through the same port or the same connection. Now that also limits the speed in which the data can transfer. Now newer ones have USB 3.0 so it kind of eliminated that issue. But in the past, these types of drives kind of went a little bit slower just because everything was going through one cable. So the same instance with this hard drive, with this external drive. It uses one cable. I can use the same one because the port's the same. And when I plug this hard drive in, it has one cable for the data and for the power. Now, with this particular hard drive, it has an adapter on here that I can take the adapter off. If I take the adapter off, it might be a little bit hard to see, but it has the same data and power connections that a regular laptop hard drive would have. And again, remember I said this was the laptop hard drive in here, but rather than having to connect these two to our computer externally, we use an adapter that converts those two connections, the data and the power, into one USB connection. So that's all this does right here, is this converts the data and power into one connection. So that's a little bit about those. Now the next style hard, external hard drive uses a different sort of power. Now remember I said this is the same exact hard drive that was in a desktop. The size is the exact same, it just has an enclosure to keep it safe and because we're using it outside of the computer. Now this hard drive actually has an adapter as well and if I take that off you can see underneath it still has the same, oops sorry, same power and data connection from our regular desktop hard drive. So again we use an adapter, a little uh, piece like this that connects. And when we plug this in, we have an external power and an external USB port. So I would get my cable that came with this, and this has a proprietary connection. It's very similar to a mini USB, but it has a little extension, and that would plug in just like this. And again, this is just our data cable, so that would plug into a USB port on our computer. Now in some cases, the power adapter is going to have its own proprietary port, but what you really need to be aware of is the voltage and the amperage of this power adapter. So this is my external hard drive that we just plugged in the USB cable to for the data. Here would be the power adapter. So I would plug this in here, and then this would be plugged into the wall. 
and that way it has a separate cable for data so it can function a lot faster and the power can be sustainable and be constant rather than having to pull power from a computer. Now these are a little bit better as far as longevity on how long they'll last and they're also a little bit cheaper. The downside to these is it's not as portable as the other types of drives we just mentioned. So you have to carry two cables with you as opposed to just one. And the size is actually larger because again, it's using that larger desktop style hard drive. So for instance, if we wanted to buy a one terabyte external hard drive in this model that used the USB cable for power and data, we can assume it would be about $100. And that's changing as tomorrow it might be $50. So don't quote me on the price, I'm just using it as an example. Alternatively, for $100, we can buy one of these that's a two terabyte drive. So it would be twice the size of capacity of as far as data that it can hold. Now again, you're paying for portability and speed and things like that. So with this one, you're just gonna have two separate cables. And with this drive, you're gonna have just one cable. Now the next drive I want to talk about is this GoFlex. Now again, these two are both GoFlex, but one is a home and one is a desk. They're both USB 3.0 and they're both two terabyte drives. The only difference is the connection dock that's on the bottom of it. So if you notice, actually if I take the adapters off, these two drives are exactly the same. You wouldn't know any different other than what I'm about to show you. So this actually comes with a different style dock that when you plug it in, it has again an external power, but it includes an internet cable connection. So if I were to plug in an internet cable to this, I could plug this in to my router or to my switch or something in my house, or if we're out of business, we could plug it into a switch. And any computer that was connected to that network could have access to this drive. So it can be like a shared drive for a house or a business. Now there's also good and downsides to this. One, obviously if you're on Wi-Fi, you can connect to this through the router without having to plug it in directly to your laptop. In some instances, you can access it to a tablet or through a phone, when otherwise you can't connect an external hard drive to a phone or a tablet. The downside to this is you always have to leave it turned on or you have to go manually turn it on with the switch whenever you're wanting to access it. It also takes a little bit more configuring in order for this to work. These drives are just regular plug and play. You take a USB cable, you plug it in, open up my computer, there's all your access to your files. This is a network drive, so it has to actually be installed or configured on the network in order to be accessed. And I'll link a video in the description on how to set this drive up. All right, so in general, and there's three types of external hard drives we could use. A flash drive, a USB power drive, and an external power drive. For the price wise, if we're gonna spend the same amount on all three, this would give us our most storage, but it's the less convenient of the three. Our flash drive would give us the least storage, but it's the most convenient. You could put these on keychains, and they're fairly inexpensive. In the middle, we have a USB powered external drive that's a little bit slower, doesn't hold quite as much as the full blown external drive, but it's kind of in the middle of the three. So depending on your application and what you may be trying to do, you may have a mixture of the three or only need one or only need two. If you're gonna back up your entire computer, you probably don't wanna use a USB powered drive. You would probably wanna use one that plugs into the wall just because you're getting a better connection and the power isn't gonna be messed up in the middle of it and corrupt your data that way. If you're just transferring a few files from one computer to the other, the flash drive is probably your best bet. But again, they do have limits as far as size and speed of transferred data. Now, the only thing to be aware of with an external drive on your network is your speeds is gonna be determined by your network cabling or your network limits. So what I mean by that is in some cases, this type of drive or a USB style drive, even if it's this one, would transfer data quicker than over the network. So again, you have to take that in consideration whenever you're trying to decide what type of drive you want to purchase. If you're backing up 10 or more computers, you're probably definitely gonna want some type of network drive 
And if not, you're gonna want a computer set aside just for network storage alone. This is just something that's a little bit more convenient, a little bit more price efficient, but it does have its limitations. So if you have any questions about any type of external drives, please let me know in the comments below. I'll try my best to help. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.